Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visite suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Mana nitro tuot alan hilter kartek, tashla hayek, suprememastertv.com, tashutras schedule. My heart aches for the suffering of the people. I feel what they feel. But uh, we can only stop the disaster once and for all by tackling the root problem, that is, by stopping the killing of human and mass murdering of innocent animal life. Warning signs to help end climate change, locust swarms, part three of three. Continue watching to find out more. OCO means hello in Cherokee, one of the Iroquoian languages. I'm Tahoka. The Iroquois people wish you a happy and healthy life while protecting the animal friends and the environment. Noble viewers, welcome to the third and concluding episode of Warning Signs to Help End Climate Change, Locust Swarms. In our first two episodes, we discovered that billions of locusts have been threatening food security and people's livelihoods across the Horn of Africa, Pakistan, and India. In late 2019 and again in 2020, vast numbers of locusts proliferated in East Africa and the Red Sea region due to unusual weather patterns. The infestation was the worst in several decades. On today's program, we'll travel to Argentina, Brazil, and China to learn about the devastation the insects have caused in these nations. When they swarm, locusts have voracious appetites, consuming everything in their path. Being constantly on the move, they travel with the wind, heading to areas of low pressure where wind meets rain and vegetation starts to grow. Swarms join up with other swarms, eventually forming gigantic waves several billion strong. In late May 2020, a 23 square kilometer horde of locusts entered Argentina after passing through Paraguay. The insects landed first in the provinces of Santa Fe and Formosa, both of which are essential for agriculture. Millions invaded cities and farms, devouring all the crops in the area in a matter of hours. The locusts were enormous. Technicians from the Argentine government measured specimens up to 15 centimeters in length, about the size of a human hand. The invasion was the worst the country had experienced in 50 years, and approximately 700,000 hectares, or 1.7 million acres of land, were affected, with extensive damage being done to corn, sugarcane, wheat, and oat crops. In their never-ending quest for food, the locusts continued to move, and on June 30th, 2020, a swarm thought to contain 40 million members threatened to invade Brazil. The nation was already struggling to battle one of the world's worst coronavirus outbreaks, having suffered more than 100,000 deaths from the disease. As the swarm approached, two Brazilian states were put on high alert, and farmers feared serious damage to their corn and wheat crops. On June 25, 2020, the Minister of Agriculture for Brazil, Her Excellency Teresa Cristina Correa da Costa Dias, declared a state of phytosanitary emergency in the states of Rio Grande do Sul and Santa Catarina. But luck was on their side. A cold front kept the swarm from entering the nation and Brazil's crops were spared, at least this year. Meanwhile, in southern China, authorities shared a similar concern. In late June 2020, a massive wave of yellow-spined bamboo locusts arrived in Yunnan province after migrating from neighboring countries. By the end of July, the Plague Prevention and Control Headquarters in Yunnan reported that the insects had consumed approximately 8,900 hectares, or 21,500 acres of crops. Yellow-spined bamboo locusts feed primarily on bamboo, but can also decimate plantain, corn, and paddy rice crops. Experts state that rising global temperatures are the primary cause of China's locust infestation. 
Under normal conditions, most locust eggs overwintering in the soil freeze and die during the winter months. But with warmer winters, the eggs are surviving and can then hatch in vast quantities the following year. Moreover, locusts are not the only insects that have started appearing in huge numbers. In late July 2020, an 80 kilometer wide swarm of flying ants began making its way over the counties of Kent and Sussex in southeastern England. The enormous cloud was visible from space and was picked up by the UK Meteorological Office's weather radar. The forecasters initially mistook the insects for rain. According to Dr. Africa Gomez, a biologist and senior lecturer at the University of Hull, conditions have to be right for the ants to appear. She explains, to fly, the ants need thermals, which can only happen on hot days, with research suggesting it needs to be 25 degrees Celsius or higher. In the past, the UK experienced the ants only once a year, but in 2020, due to soaring temperatures, the insects have appeared several times. While they cause no damage, they are unsettling, especially when arriving in such vast numbers. Now let's pause briefly to pray for heaven's blessings to speed the recovery of all locust affected areas. We'll return after this brief message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back as we continue to learn about the massive insect invasions plaguing our Earth. The damage caused by the insect swarms is immense, both in terms of food security and loss of livelihood. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, or FAO, says if the current trajectory continues, the locust upsurge may threaten the livelihoods of 10% of Earth's population. And the World Bank states, Without broad-scale measures to control the locusts, damages and losses could reach 8.5 billion US dollars by the end of 2020. Climate change experts warn the warming oceans that feed cyclones and heavy rains have led to record-breaking groups of desert locusts, which could grow larger and more widespread if climate change continues. Is there a spiritual meaning to all of this? Locust attacks are mentioned in almost all the world's ancient texts, from wall paintings on Egyptian pyramids to the Holy Bible and Holy Quran. In the Christian tradition, swarms of locusts have typically been associated with the end of the world, stemming from a prophecy about an apocalypse. The Holy Bible's Book of Revelations describes a time of cleansing on earth. During this period, a pale horse ridden by death descends to the world, and Revelations chapter 6 verse 8 states, They, the horse and rider, were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. In other words, during the apocalypse, one quarter of the earth's population could perish. Some present-day experts believe that the expression wild beasts of the earth refers to COVID-19, a zoonotic disease originating in bats and pangolins, and that plague refers to the current droughts, floods, and massive locust infestations. Another passage from the Holy Bible, Exodus chapter 10 verses 12 through 15 reads, Never before had there been such a plague of locusts, nor will there ever be again. They covered all the ground until it was black. They devoured all that was left after the hail, everything growing in the fields and the fruit on the trees. A fundamental question is, why are these dramatic events occurring? Numerous scientific reports conclude that the animal livestock industry is responsible for massive levels of greenhouse gas emissions leading to climatic change and thus recommend that people shift to a plant-based diet. Supreme Master Ching Hai also explains that worldwide adoption of the vegan lifestyle is the fastest way to halt climate change. According to the latest report, 
Sí, porque de acuerdo a los, a los reportes más recientes. Animals is um, responsible for 51% at least of all the greenhouse gas emission that hit up the planet. Los animales son responsables por lo menos del 51% de los gases de efecto invernadero que calientan nuestro planeta. So if we stop animal industry, we cut out 51%. Así que si eliminamos la industria animal, eliminamos hasta el 1% de la heat, del calor, claro. Fácil. Sí, sí. And then, if we use all the tillable land, all the cultivable land, to plant organic vegetable and fruit. Y entonces si usamos toda la tierra disponible arable, arable que se usa para los animales para plantar orgánico, mm -hmm. then we cut off another 40% at least of carbon dioxide that exists. Entonces eliminamos por lo menos otro 40% del dióxido de carbono que ya existe. The planet cooled off. La planeta ya se enfrió. In a few years. En unos cuantos años. I mean, the, when the animals all die naturally. Yeah. In a few years. Quiero decir cuando los animales mueran naturalmente en unos pocos años. And all the organic vegetables come in. Mm -hmm. Y todos los vegetales orgánicos crezcan. A few years time. We don't have any two degree. En unos cuantos años ya no tendremos dos grados, sí. dos grados, sí. Then we have the planet still. Y entonces aún tendremos nuestro We can still keep the cars, the train. Todavía podemos tener carros, Airplane. aviones. We develop a better, greener technology for transportation, etc. You see what I mean? We still have all that, all the comfort. Vean lo que me refiero, tenemos todavía todo, todas las comodidades. Yes, just stop the animal industry and become vegan. If we don't change our disaster breeding provoking way, then disaster will never end. I'm also in tears whenever there is a natural disaster anywhere in the world. My heart aches for the suffering of the people. I feel what they feel, and I'm very, very much saddened. But uh, we can only stop the disaster once and for all by tackling the root problem, that is, by stopping the killing of human and mass murdering of innocent animal life. Only when we walk in peace and love on this earth will the earth and nature respond peacefully to us. If we protect others, we will be protected. And as more of us become vegan, the spiritual consciousness of humankind can be elevated higher. Let's continue striving to touch people's hearts and minds to change to a vegan lifestyle and to love the precious animals and our respected planet. Then the changes in our world could happen in more surprising speed than you think. Many thanks, Supreme Master Ching Hai, for sharing your wisdom that global adoption of the vegan lifestyle can stop all of the current disasters. We pray that humanity will soon live in a compassionate, noble, vegan world. Concerned viewers, thank you for your company today during warning signs to help end climate change. Locust Swarms Part 3 of 3. Coming up next is Caring for Furry Pals During a Lockdown Part 1 of 2, right after noteworthy news. We wish you and your loved ones continued safety, well-being, and spiritual progress. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash PE.